Okay, so welcome to our talk, Next Generation Resource Management. I'm David Edmondson, and I don't know how to go to the next slide. There we go. I'm David Edmondson. I work for Blue Systems. And I'm Henri. I work for a software consulting uh, company based in Paris called Enyoka. I'm a long-time KDE user and also a new developer. So we'll start with the problem. A, a job of a desktop environment is to get you, the user, to your applications. You need to launch them, we need to show them, and in general, you need to be in control of them. So if we look at how you manage your running processes and your applications, what used to happen a few years ago, five years ago, you'd open your Firefox, you'd go to Dig and MySpace, you'd open your Instant Messenger, Capetta, and you'd run PS and you would see Firefox and you would see Competitor, and it's fairly self-explanatory. You could teach up to computer science students. Now, now the situation is very different. You open Firefox, you run Discord in a flat pack because that's cool now. And Discord in a flat pack is 13 processes. This list here is truncated because I couldn't put list view in a PDF. It's insane. It's basically unreadable to me, particularly if you don't have this parent tree relationship, which you don't always have, and they're just random names doing random things. So understanding is difficult, but also anything that tries to aggregate resource stats, like how much CPU time has this application used while the application has been open, or how much battery has been used by this application, it's not less just because the application has split it up. We need to track this properly. In numbers are so meaningless, you could write it on the side of a bus. It doesn't mean anything. So we need some metadata. The other problem we have is we want to make something that's fair. As I mentioned before, Discord in the flat pack has 13 processes. Krita, advanced graphical application, is one. Krita is obviously going to be using your CPU because it's an intense graphical application doing clever things. Discord is going to be using your CPU because it's written in Electron. So how are you going to divide this fairly? A scheduler has even less information. It's just going to see 14 opaque processes. No idea what they are or what they really correspond to. We need some metadata. And not just any metadata. Metadata propagates all the way down through your system level so it's available to schedulers and so forth. Another problem we have, one of Plasma's jobs is to try and map everything that's going on on your system together. So you open something in your start menu, we have a desktop file with an icon and a name. And then later a window appears and it tells us what the name it thinks it is. And we hope that they have some sort of resemblance in common and we can match it up. And very often applications just write any garbage in their window properties. It's difficult to match. We're full of hacks and heuristics to just guess. And we don't like guessing. Also, because everything's multi-process, if you look at your task manager right now, you'll see Firefox, you'll see a little audio icon, which is very clever. But that little audio icon isn't actually in the same process as a process which owns a Firefox window. We're having to grab this two bits of information, guess, and smash them together. And we're not always right on here. It's a complete arbitrary guessing game. We need some metadata. And the smart people among you might have spotted a theme going on so far. So the interesting and the good news is that it's essentially a solved problem. So, so some of you have probably heard of uh, control groups, also called C groups. Uh, they are a kernel feature that's been introduced in 2007. Next slide. Uh, so it's, it's uh, essentially a partition over the process space uh, that uh, also has a um, hierarchical structure, uh, meaning it's a way to categorize processes uh, inside of groups uh, that have a tree structure. Um, they the C groups have originally been designed for uh, servers, and they ha have also seen a lot of usage in container runtimes. Uh, so, so once you've got these groups, um, you can attach controllers to them. 
but what exactly are those controllers? So there are three main ones uh, that so the, the CPU one that affects uh, CPU usage, the memory one that affects memory, uh, the IO, which is, uh, affects uh, uh, disk IO. And they do three basic functions on, on these resources. One of them is uh, limiting the overall uh, usage of a resource. Um, it can also influence scheduling. Uh, and also it does accounting, meaning uh, you, you can uh, actually know at a application level uh, how much your application is using uh, CPU. And that also translates to things like uh, uh, power and battery us usage. Um, so an another feature that uh, you can get out of C groups is a finer control of uh, the, the out of memory policy. Um, uh, regarding the, the IO controller, it's uh, currently uh, difficult to, to use for, for desktop because it was uh, uh, initially meant for uh, servers with a pretty well-defined uh, storage configuration. So it so this one doesn't, doesn't uh, quite work out of the box yet. Um, so th the way that C groups can influence uh, uh, scheduling is uh, through weights. Uh, these are defined uh, relative to uh, siblings inside of the tree. Uh, so they, the, the CPU uh, weight strategy is uh, more interesting and more powerful than what uh, NICE does, which is the old uh, API uh, for, for defining um, um, uh, priorities for uh, CPU usage. Uh, because, um, so, so it's more powerful because uh, uh, you can uh, not only uh, have weights that uh, make the priority go down, but, but also go up. And also, of course, uh, it's more powerful because it's at a control group uh, level uh, instead of a simple uh, process level. And also, it, ha it has this uh, recursive uh, nature, which makes it uh, much more powerful. So, um, Technically, uh, the, the C group API can be controlled uh, through a simple uh, uh, file system interface uh, that is uh, inside of uh, SysFS. But soon enough, you're going to need a central daemon to, to manage the creation and uh, attaching processes to, to those C groups. And the good news is that SysMD has actually been supporting C groups since forever. And actually, every system, uh, SysMD unit, that uh, systemd launches is inside of its own C group. It has been for a long time. Um, also, systemd is capable of uh, delegating um, management of uh, the control group uh, tree to to your user through its uh, systemd instance, which is basically just a, a second systemd that is running as your user. And uh, conveniently, uh, systemd also has a dbus interface which you can use uh, from uh, user space, which means you can uh, control uh, resources and uh, from uh, from any application that is running as a, your user. Also, SysMD solves the, the problem of configuration through uh, several levels, uh, either at the system uh, or uh, a distribution level. And also, you can define uh, uh, configuration at the, at the user level. So this is what a typical uh, system D C group tree looks like, and you can try this at home right now using this simple system D dash CGLS command. So here you can see what are called slices and uh, services, and, and also you can uh, see the um, the system D user instance, which is uh, the user uh, at uh, one thousand dot service. Um, so C groups have been redesigned completely in 2015 with the new C groups v2 API. Uh, and it solved in a lot of um, architectural uh, issues that they had with the previous API. And what you need to know about it is that uh, currently all modern distributions uh, actually expose the new API through what is called uh, the hybrid hierarchy. But uh, um, Inside, they are still using the uh, C group v1 uh, 
uh, API, just uh, just exposing uh, the, the new hierarchy. So the, the, the um, in practice, this means that uh, SysMD is not always uh, capable of uh, do um, is what well, it's always capable of doing the the grouping at a user level, but currently most distributions except Fedora can't uh, actually uh, apply um, C, uh, controllers at the at the user level. Uh, and uh, also, well, the previous slide. <laughs> yeah, the previous slide, yeah. So um, Seagrass V2 has a constraint where uh, the inner nodes of the tree uh, can't contain pro pro processes. This is to make um, accounting uh, simpler for, uh, for the kernel. And uh, the, the new API also introduced uh, um, once, basically once uh, a C group has uh, other C groups as children, you, you can't attach uh, processes directly to it. And uh, these inner, uh, inner nodes are called slices in the systemd, and they can also have uh, uh, drop-ins, meaning you can also define configuration ahead of time for uh, whole categories of uh, applications. So the question is, uh, how do you actually uh, leverage systemd? To manage uh, C groups for when you, when you're launching a new app that you haven't uh, defined ahead of time, um, and actually SysMD allows you to to define units at runtime, meaning uh, you and, and there are two ways to do this. One is uh, the simpler one uh, called scopes, in which you launch the process use as usual, and then you ask SysMD to tag it to a C group. And the second uh, version is uh, services which are basically uh, like uh, your typical um, uh, daemon, uh, daemon services, only they are defined at runtime. And in that mode, uh, systemd is doing the actual launching and uh, basically manages the entire lifetime of the, the application. I just saw me You did. Yeah, thank you. So what have we done so far, the current rollout? So Plasma 5.19 has every application spawning inside its own C group. And most of this is a tiny piece of code in Keo, in the method that David Four talked about this morning, application launch job, command line launch job. But we needed a lot of effort to go through all of this KDE code and make sure we were all using a unified way of launching new applications. And that's something that had become quite fragmented over the last 20 years. So it was worth unifying anyway. And we found dozens of edge cases. I'm sure we might still find a few more where we had to identify these and fix them up. So the goal is to do everything safely. We don't want to have any regressions because we're introducing a fairly sizable new change um, into how we run things on Linux. So the deployment strategy is we start using the C groups. Um, and because we're deploying things as scopes, we're launching exactly the same way as before. We're just tagging it afterwards saying, this, app, this thing we've just launched is part of this group. And here's some metadata about that group with the name of the .desktop file. So we start doing that. We can check it's all working. And only then, when we know everything's working correctly, we can start making more use of this metadata. So what does that mean? Well, the Linux task scheduler starts using it already. As soon as we've got it in a C group, the task scheduler can make use of it. Uh, we've got some patches on review for your task manager and that sound icon and various parts that we mentioned earlier. But also libcaseysguard and caseysguard can start surfacing this information to your user. So we look at caseysguard now. And this is a rewrite that Arjen is doing. and is a good place to introduce this new feature. We present the exact same information. You can find all of the same information as before. It's just drilled down in a more convenient way. You've got your application name, as you would expect to see it in your task manager. And inside, you've still got that list of processes, but the aggregation is more reliable than just the guesswork that we could rely on before. And KDE, even though KDE is great, Plasma doing it on its own isn't really going to get that far. But what we found out was we started going down this path. 
And then we started talking to Noam, and they had very similar problems. They really wanted to focus on the OOM killing, out of memory killing, and making sure that was prioritized, weighted with different metadata attached. So they started wanting to do the same thing. And it all came together. And we started unifying on a way of tagging the .desktop files, the application name to your C group names. And we came up with a set of different slices that programs and services are going to be running in. So we met up at FOSDEM, met some uh, systemd folks, some kernel folks, known folks, obviously, and had a meeting on this. And there's work going on on the free desktop mailing list and so forth, with links at the end of where all this upstream work is happening. So it's going to be universal. And I've talked about how it solves problems, but then we can go to the next step of start adding features on top. I said we're going to, we've got fair resource distribution. Well, now we can make unfair resource distribution. So what do I mean by that? We can statically assign some weights to various services and, app and programs. So there's going to be three default slices, which will be set up. The session, which will contain Quinn and Plasma Shell and things that you don't want to be killed, things that you don't want to freeze or start up, particularly on Wayland, where Quinn is doing some very important jobs. The application slices, which will be competing for CPU and memory only within this one slice. And then the background services, where we can just dump everything which still needs to run, but maybe doesn't need to have as much priority as some of the other things that are happening. And then we can apply limits, um, which can take us further, and they can be done by application, the distro, or the user. So we can have it so we limit file indexes to only ever take 10% of your CPU status. We can set some various OP, um, out of memory stats, and we can stop fault bombs from ha happening. And we, are, we can also uh, change resource allocation uh, based on runtime information. So for instance, uh, we can prioritize the currently focused application inside Quinn or any uh, window manager. Uh, so working towards that goal, I started a small library. Next slide. Uh, that just uh, simply wraps the system DBus API uh, to expose uh, resource control for all uh, your currently running apps. And this, uh, this is done in a way that is uh, friendly to KDE applications and actually is also fully asynchronous and, and can, it can be used uh, easily from QML. Uh, so well, you're welcome, to, of course, to have a, have a look at it and just uh, start hacking on it if you're interested. And uh, well, uh, the library also includes a small demo app that uh, is doing that, meaning it's uh, talking to your window manager to determine the currently running, uh, currently focused application. And it just uh, gives it a high CPU weight. Uh, so you can also watch a demo of this uh, uh, at the, the link uh, at the end of the presentation. This is a screenshot of it. So uh, one of the things that uh, we are working on is uh, trying to move to systemd services rather than scopes. Uh, that way, uh, the entire process lifetime is uh, managed by systemd. And uh, for our efforts, we get improved logging. We also get uh, some extra configuration that can be done with uh, scopes. Um, also, it fixes a bug uh, with uh, systemd uh, for older versions uh, uh, before 2.38, where uh, you, you basically could not uh, group applications uh, in scopes. So services will fix that. Um, so we actually already have a, an implementation for this uh, ready. It's currently hidden, hidden behind a, a flag. But uh, we did run into some issues uh, with uh, system delimitations, so, which would make the experience uh, not as good as with scopes. So, uh, also, more work is uh, needed to um, get the, the crash handling to work nicely with uh, Dr. Conkey. We've talked there uh, about getting applications into your own scopes, your own managed and services so you're managed correctly. But one of the other tasks we've been doing is managing 
the rest of plasma. So all of plasma's core parts and um, the background services. And we could just tag them in the re re relevant C group, but it's something we wanted anyway of having entire plasma session managed by systemd units. So we get all of this resource management that we've talked about. We get the good logging where you can actually find out the logs from that one process in a really queryable way. But also it provides that familiar experience for sysadmins. It's something that was requested by the Munich folk back when they were doing their distribution because they already have to learn all of this stuff via system. And then they get to Plasma. They want to do some various tweaks, mods, modifications um, throughout of our services. And we don't want them to have to learn another new layer on top when we can just provide this fairly similar seamless experience. So your goal is to do a seamless regression report. It's going to come in optional, hidden, and then get some more users. And we've made a lot of effort to make sure we get every single feature that used to work working exactly the same as before. So .desktop files in your auto start folders, uh, thanks to some work by Benjamin Berger from GNOME, they get converted into systemd units magically. And all of the details, attention to details with environment variables and such, should just work. That's the goal. So we've got some further reading. I'm being told time is up. So I'm going to copy this into your notes and get on with some Q&A. Thank you so much. I hope there's some applause on the chat. And uh, yeah, you asked a few nice questions. So let's have a look at what uh, we have there. Thanks for the talk again. So uh, somebody's asking for slide number 21. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll leave that open while. Um... Excellent. So yeah, lots more questions. It's interesting that all this requires changing the code paths via which things are launched. Is there no way to enforce mandatory grouping regardless of launch method? Or is it that groups are managed entirely from user space? Um... Because we want to do everything without any sort of privilege escalation, you, um, the person mentioning us possibly knows there is actually a way to automatically put things in C groups, but it doesn't quite work in a way that's suitable for a desktop. Um, I want to focus on these other questions, but we can sort of go back to that. Um, it doesn't, it's just not quite, because you've got all these extra arguments and such, and start by these environments, it's more complicated. Yeah, chat uh, during Academy, okay. Why isn't this fancy view on my Plasma master build? Uh, um, if you use cases, um, again, I'll add a link in the shared note in the chat. Um, there's a repository. If you look in the Plasma mailing list for an um, email from Arjen about Plasma cases guard, you'll see this, and you can just compile it with your KD source build and start running this. All right, and you're informing the new UI isn't called cases guard. Nice. Yes, I. Uh, Plasma-System Monitor. <laughs> All right. Uh, so from your blog, so David, uh, could you elaborate on how us users can help with this? Sure. So if you run systemd-cgls, which is mentioned on one of these slides, um, yep, you will see a tree. And what you should see is app.slice, and you should see app and then a name which corresponds to your desktop file, and then things you would expect to see in here. If you see a bunch of stuff inside session scope, things aren't working. And that could mean some things which are pending. We've got a couple of the background services aren't quite done yet. Uh, Dbus.service is upstream, but that's going to move into background slice when they merge a patch. Um, but yeah, look for this output. If something looks horribly wrong, it's worth looking at. All right. Uh, so, is it going to be built on top of System D minus minus user user yeah, service built. units? Yeah, it's built on top of that. Mm -hmm. All right. So, and plans to integrate with OOMD. I mean, generally, our goal is to put as much metadata into a system as possible, and then that's available to anyone using a system. Uh, if it's mm -hmm. metadata there, whatever service you want to use should have it. And just to expand on the out of memory stuff, it's something that's absolutely amazing is in the metadata, you can tag how much memory you expect a C group to use. So if I have Plasma Shell using 400 megabytes and I have KWriteD using 400 megabytes, us users probably can identify which one's wrong because one 
just echoes some text to another place, one is an entire UI. We know what's wrong. How is a system meant to know what's wrong? And just an arbitrary number isn't enough. Is it metadata we have allows us to put all sorts of interesting things in there. Cool. All right, we are running really short on time now. We can maybe try to do a bit more. Um, foreground booster, is that something the Wayland compositor could do by default? And what about evil apps uh, boosting themselves using Dbus API? I mean, we sh it should work with Wayland. It's, we've got it standalone just so it, um, just for convenience, uh, for your rollout. And there's no need for it to be in Quinn. And technically, any evil app that isn't sandboxed could, but hopefully we're yeah. moving more towards sandboxing. All right. Uh, so then there's one question that doesn't... Oh, I'm just going to ask the question sense. 10 quickly, sorry. Um, just to, to interrupt. Um, there's a question about BSD. Obviously, what we're doing is adding things on top. And in terms of OSC group stuff, we're adding stuff on top. We're not taking anything away. So that exists. And with regards to startup, we've done so much refactoring on startup to get to this point that we've completely boosted it up, sped it up for everybody. I mean, I've been refactoring KSM server for about three years, doing a tiny bit, have a release, tiny bit, have a release to make sure we didn't break anything. And I think everybody has benefited from that, even if you're not going to use this. Sorry, I've been talking oh, yes. on me if you wanted to add anything. <laughs> no, it's fine. All right, I think then we are wrapping up. Uh, we can, oh, there's one last question, maybe uh, Plasma Mobile and phones, do you mm -hmm. see advantages there? Oh, yeah, yes. definitely. Yes, uh, as for us, one of the, the, uh, the, the interest of uh, doing uh, this foreground booster stuff is uh, mainly for mobile. All right, thank you so much.